Let me. Great, and I'm gonna say, got it, not leave the meeting. Um, friends, welcome. My name is Missy Shipman with Missy's Gladheart Studio. And once again, I'm delighted to partner with Julia at the Baldwinsville Public Library to bring with you, to bring our monthly card making class to you. Um, I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And I, um, for almost 24 years, I've been sharing um, card making and have had the great privilege and pleasure of partnering with the Baldwinsville Library for over a decade. And uh, we're happy to offer these Zoom um, virtual options through Zoom and Facebook and YouTube, as well as in-person events. So if you can join me tomorrow, Friday morning, we'll be doing our in-person kit together class. And I have some fun options for you. I'll be giving you some sneak peeks tonight of those choices. And I, I hope that, um, that you're well and staying healthy during the, the, um, the air quality concerns that we've had this week. And my thoughts and prayers are with the folks in Canada. I can only imagine how the smoke would be if you're closer to the fires. Um, but tonight we're going to make three cards together. We're going to begin with, in your packet, you have a card kit that looks like this. It's a white envelope with some um, Daffodil Delight lining. And then uh, these these card pieces. So we're going to start with that one tonight. If you want to stamp along with me, you can um, pull out the pieces. Sometimes I go a little bit quickly. And so you may find you want to watch and ask questions and follow along and then go back and watch the recording uh, for any tips that you need to complete your project. So don't feel you're um, you're required to get them all finished. I also want to remind you that you can make them any way you like. So you, uh, a lot of times people enjoy watching the video and getting some ideas and then mix and matching the card parts that are in your kit along with supplies that you have um, in your home stash or that you've borrowed from the library uh, consumable parts. So, or non-consumable parts, the stamps and the ink that, that Julia uh, put together, collated for you to, to, um, to enjoy. Um, this is June, um, June 8th, 2023. Never before has there been a day, nor will there ever be a day quite like this one. So thank you for joining me and Julia for our, um, our evening together. The first card we're going to begin with is the card with the white envelope with the yellow lining. And we have a card base that has a printed floral design. And what we're gonna do is just build up this card and we're gonna add some embellishment to this, uh, this label piece. But first we'll just go ahead and start building the card. In your kit, you have some Stampin' Dimensionals. You'll see tonight I'll be using two kinds of adhesive, the Stampin' Dimensionals and our Tombow Multipurpose Liquid Glue. This is a very strong glue. If you have a latex allergy, then please don't use this kind of glue. Um, it, it does have the latex allergy, but it's a strong glue. It dries clear and it's very versatile. And it allows you when you're working with things to have a little bit of wiggle room, which is really handy uh, when you're putting multiple pieces together to have a little freedom. So, uh, and then the Stampin' Dimensionals. If you don't have an adhesive like this one at home, you could use a, a glue stick or a tape runner, something that's gonna help make a, um, a, a smooth, flat adhesive but you know how much i enjoy the dimensionals and showcasing these so julia do you want to highlight my hands now and i'll go ahead and we can start putting together this one okay so i'm going to make sure that this this front layer this this uh rectangle with the gold i want that to be elevated from the card so i'm going to put that on with some dimensionals People always ask how many you need. Well, it's your own personal taste. I think a lot of times I'll make a domino pattern or a, a number five like the dice. So it'll have one in each corner and one in the middle. But these are quite strong. So sometimes you, you don't need as many. They do just help keep the card with some, um, some bulk to it. Even once when it goes in an envelope, it's gonna kind of hold that, that shape. Next, we'll add this, uh, I think it's Mango Melody is the real name from Stampin' Up, but it's kind of a bold yellow color. And I'm gonna just use some of my flat glue here, my Tombow multi-purpose glue in the middle section because these little flags are gonna hang over the edge. And I'll put that there. 
Next, I will put on this um, shiny foil label piece, which is really has a fun um, texture to it with the, the shine of the foil. You can see now how that's coming together. The shine is really special on there. And then we have this label. So I'm going to share with you a stamp set, um, a new, I'm going to be showing some fun new things tonight. And this one is called Crafting With You. And it has a great sentiment that says, sending you a handmade hug. And isn't that fun to think about uh, something coming through the mail to a person's mailbox or to their desk at work or um, in a basket of cookies that you place on your neighbor's porch. And we to think about paper as a handmade hug, a special card that you've created. So this could be for any occasion, obviously. This is really just a, a thinking of you kind of card. It can be if someone's under the weather or just having some challenges. It's a nice way to let them know you're thinking of them or if they're having a birthday or any other kind of special celebration. There we are. So this one I'm going to place, you'll see I put dimensionals there because I want to give it even more height. And that's a very simply put together with lots of layers card. But before we move ahead from that, I want to um, stamp on the envelope. We've talked about how much fun it is to, to um, include art on the envelope. And in this Tonight, we're going to be using a stamp set that's new, one of my new favorites. It's called Bird's Eye View. And I love it for my library friends because it has this stack of books and these birds and owls and little um, eyeglasses. And this could be a monocle or it could be a little balloon that the owl is holding. But we're going to make a little scene using these stamps and I'll color it in. And if it's, if, let me know if it's a stamp set you think you'd like to see more of because I for sure will be creating some more projects using this fun, this fun stamp set uh, with the books. I think it's marvelous. So I'm gonna have my bird just sitting here by the book on top of the book stack. And we'll give him some glasses. These remind me of Harry Potter glasses. So this is kind of like Harry Potter's owl here. Okay. And so I could leave it just with black and white. It's just gonna be on the envelope and give a little um, flavor and flair to the mailbox. It's, it's fun to get a card, an envelope that's shaped like this, right? Cause it's rare that bills come in envelopes shaped like this. Bills tend to come in the long, thinner envelopes, right? Is it okay to hear? Do you want me to try to make it louder, Julia? Or are you okay? Oh, good. Okay. All right. So, but, but instead of just leaving them black and white tonight, I'm going to show you our, wa our watercolor pencils. And this is a new collection of colors because it has um, a returning in color called Fresh Freesia, which is a really lovely purpley pink. And it also has this fun new color called Pecan Pie. So I'm going to start off um, coloring the owl. I'm going to sort of put down a base layer of this yellow. And one of the things I love about using the watercolor pencils is you don't even have to use them with water. I'm not going to use them with water tonight. I'm just going to color with them. And they have a, a really, um, uh, it's almost a crayon-like quality. They, they come out very smoothly from the pencil tip. It's sometimes you may have used pencils where they, they leave kind of rough lines. They're kind of um, almost an aggressive kind of, um, tip there. This is very smooth. And what I'm going to do to create some shading is the parts where, where the stamp has these dark lines here, that indicates already some shading or shadow. And so I'm going to go ahead and make it darker there. Just with this, I'm going right with the same color pencil. I'm going over it and adding some darker parts to where those dark shade lines are. We'll do the same for the little wing. And then maybe let's add in some of this lovely orange. This is called pumpkin pie. And I'm gonna be bolder, um, harder pushing, harder pressure at the edge here. And then I'm gonna kind of lighten my touch as I move away. And that's gonna kind of help create this little bit of shading. Does that work with all pencils or just these special ones? Uh, these are watercolor pencils. So they do the makeup of the lead, uh, the color tube is a little softer. Um, 
but I haven't experimented a lot with other um, pencils or what I think I think because they're watercolor pencils is why they have that softer texture. If they're pencils that are not called watercolor but just called colored pencils, they tend to be a little drier. Um, but in this case, I'm not going to add water. If I were, I could take one of those water pens that we've used in the past, or I could take a paintbrush and I could use that. And that would even blend the colors further. But you'll see, I feel pretty satisfied with just the way I, with my pressure, I can change the color. Let's add a little shadow to the wing here too. So you can see that. So they, they actually kind of blend even without water, which is handy. Now the books we can have a lot of fun with and color all different colors, right? Like a rainbow of books at the library. Now I'd love to have a discussion if we were, in, especially if we were in person, we could talk about what books we're reading, right? But I could still, you can comment, you can go off mute and tell me, or you can comment in the section. My current favorite author is um, Kristen Hanna. She's an author, most of her books are set in the Pacific Northwest. And uh, I've really been enjoying them. They are, are um, fiction stories, uh, but I have a sense that she does a lot of research and study to make them um, seem very real. And so if you have a, a favorite author or are reading a book that you're really enjoying and like to share that with us, we'd love to hear it. You can write it in the chat or you can go off mute and tell us. For me, the trick is when I have a good book to read, I don't wanna make dinner. I don't wanna do the laundry. <laughs> I just wanna read. So I have to kind of pace myself. And I just read two of Kristen Hanna's books recently. So I, I told myself, okay, miss, you're gonna be back at the library on Friday for the kit together class. So this week we won't get any new ones until you go there on Friday. And then you can get another new one for the weekend. So. I'm very much looking forward to the morning in hopes that I'll see several of you to stamp, but also so that I can get another Kristen Hanna novel. I enjoyed reading The, um, the Lions of Fifth Avenue, which is about um, uh, the New York Public Library um, oh, back yeah. in the uh, early part of the 1900s. And then uh -huh. another person who lived later on and two different stories that fit together. Oh, that sounds very intriguing. I'm going to make a note on my paper here. It's called The Lions of Fifth Avenue. Yes, referring yep. to the lions in front of the New York. I know. I, I love that library is a favorite photo spot. Um, I And I the from the mixed up files of Mrs. Basil Lee Franken. Is it Basil Lee Franken? What's that one? From the mixed up files of Mrs. Basil something. Um, that's a fabulous book that I used to read with my students about children that, that live at the library. They kind of hide out there, or at the museum actually, isn't it? Um, I think it's at the, the Natural History Museum or something, but it's a similar, and there's lions there too. <laughs> so here we are just with some envelope art. And if you like, I'm happy and excited to be planning some more cards using this bird's eye view set. So uh, you might see some more of that soon. Um, yeah, there we go, Julia. Mixed up files of Mrs. Basil E. Frank. That's a fabulous story. Frank Weiler, there we go. <laughs> okay. All right, so I'll set this one aside now. Let's see where it is. Here it is, sending you a handmade hug. And one of the things I like about a card like this is that it's the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Thank you, Lisa. Yes, yes, yes. I want to reread that now. Isn't it fun when you um, are reminded of a favorite and you, it kind of takes you back in time to when you enjoyed it earlier in your life? I'll look forward to reading that one again. Um, but a nice thing about a card like this that's sort of neutral, it's its not shouting out birthday or anniversary or thank you or, or get well, is you can really customize it for anything you like. So, um, and then the owl on the, the envelope art, I was inspired to use that bold yellow because of what's on the envelope, but really you could do anything you like with that set. Next, let's go ahead and make the safari card. So this is a set, a paper pumpkin kit that I do have a few left for our Let's Kit Together tomorrow. If this is one that appeals to you for um, 
you, people of all young at heart, all people of all ages who are young at heart, who would enjoy these um, colorful sort of circus safari animals. And in your kit, you'll have one of three designs. So um, you're going to be looking for one of these cards that has that animal print sticking out of the envelope, okay? And we'll go ahead and put these together. And you'll wanna have your dimensionals handy as well as another kind of um, sticky glue. One of the things I love about when, when the um, kids collection sets have a card base that's decorated on both sides, you can actually stretch this into two cards if you cut it in the middle and you could put it on a, a white card base or another solid color card base. And it's just a great way to stretch your stash. But today we're gonna to go ahead and fold on that score line and we have a beautiful card base ready to work with. This is our elephant one. So if you have the kit with this fresh freesia purple color, you'll be making the, the um, elephant card along with me tonight. Now this is sort of a collage, what I call a collage card, because what we're going to do is build up, like we built up this first card from the bottom up, we're gonna do the same with the, with the Safari card. And you'll notice each one of you has a vellum. And let's see what I think I can do to show you. Well, it's probably easier if, if I do them one at a time so we can focus, but we'll do the elephant card first. But if, if you don't have the elephant card, you can still pull out your supplies and kind of get, get oriented to it. But each, each of the three cards has a vellum piece. Vellum is a translucent, um, paper that's uh has almost a plastic feel it's a little bit um you can hear the sound of it maybe it's a little more um it feels actually a little more strong but it's actually more fragile than regular cardstock paper and it's just going to kind of mute the animal print behind and let me show you where we're heading with this so you'll see how all the pieces come together before i start gluing because we're, I'm going to teach you a trick about vellum that you'll want to know. And this we're going to tuck underneath the elephant. Now, does all the, do all the kits have the same animal and, and leaves? No, this, each, I'll show you what, um, the elephant one is the Frisia one. The yellow card has the monkey. It's very similar construction. So we'll go ahead and, and do each one separately, but you'll, you'll get a feel. And this is the gazelle one or antelope um, that has, with the um, sage shadow piece, but each of them has the vellum. So we know we want to secure the vellum. Now vellum, because you can see through it, we'll be able to see the adhesive. So the tip for vellum is to, as you plan out your design, you're going to put glue where it's not going to show. So in this case, the elephant is in front of the vellum. That means I know I can put my glue in this middle part of the vellum because it's going to be covered up by the elephant. So I can make a little squiggle of my multi-purpose glue and put that down. It's a little off-centered. You can use your pieces any way you like. You might make a portrait orientation instead of a landscape. You get to decide. But see now this little squiggle of glue might be hard to see on camera, but we wouldn't want that to show, right? So that's why we put the glue behind where the elephant will be. And then we have these fun um, leaves. And I'm gonna go ahead and just dot, 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 not a lot. Give myself a little bit of adhesive for these leaves. One, two, and three. And each card has similar colors, similar shapes of the uh, safari leaves. Dot, 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 not a lot. It's very strong glue and uh, it will dry um, nicely for us. Let's put that there. And then I have my, my banner. So I need to decide what do I want this card to say? And the, the, the design, the kit of the design says you are amazing, which is also is a really great one. We also have fantastic um, and you did it. And I think this one I'm gonna make as a you did it because this is a time of year when there's a lot of graduations and other kinds of celebrations, maybe a dance recital or a um, sports event where you want to give a, a hooray card to someone, this would be appropriate. 
So I'm going to make it a you did it card. I'm going to ink up my with my ink spot and then put the words you did it. I'm going to go a little over to this banner edge because part of my of the flagged edge, because part of the banner edge is going to be hidden under my elephant. Let me do that. So it's a little off centered here, but once I put it on my card, it will be more centered. So I can put that down with my glue as well, or with the dimensionals. And we'll finish by putting that elephant in place. And he's gonna be popped up, he or she, could be Ellie, elephant, or Edward. What are some literary elephants that we know from literature? Who has one? Babar, of course. Babar. Very good, yes. He's the one I was thinking of too. All right, so now we've got that in place. And he's popped up because we just want to give that dimension to it. So this was a very simple card. Again, what I call a collage card because you're taking the different elements, different shapes and combining them. So we'll set the elephant in here and we'll work on our next one. Let's do the monkey one next. So this is the yellow card. If you have the yellow card, You'll walk, we'll assemble this together now. We're gonna fold on the crease. This one is also a uh, landscape card. And now we have, before we glue, we'll just kind of lay it out because we might change our mind a little bit, right? So we've okay, got the, the landscape card rather than the Oh, okay. So yeah. this is a landscape card because it's, it's longer um, east and west. Uh -huh. But if you, took, if you turn the yellow card, it would be a... It could be. If we wanted, we could make that a portrait card. Okay, that's what so I was thinking. Actually, the gazelle one will be a portrait card tonight. The elephant and the baboon are landscape cards. But you could maneuver the pieces any way you like. Sometimes I'll make a change if I have a particular greeting. Let's say I had a stamp that had a lot of words here or that I wanted to write, have something be right here, an image or cut out something or color something that's in this direction, that would make sense to, to turn it. Um, or if your greeting is really long and you wanna have space to have it reach across. Sometimes we make decisions about portrait landscape based on how you'll write. And other times it's just on how the papers are. So the original one was a landscape. So I'm gonna stick with that tonight. And I've got these three pieces of, of the ferns and the, um, the leaves, they're called monstera leaves. And then I have this little circle part. So you see how, even though the imagery is different, it's got a similar pattern, right? We have the vellum, we have some leaves, we have a greeting piece and we have the focal point. So that's what we're doing on this one as well. So it's going to be something like this. So again, we're going to think, where will the glue not show on the vellum? Where, where can I safely put glue on the vellum where it won't show? And it's pretty much the middle again of this. I'm going to just put some there. And if a little shows, it's, it doesn't offend me. I don't, I don't worry too much about that. But I, I guess what I'm suggesting is you wouldn't want to put a lot of adhesive all the way around the edges because it would it would it show and it could it could possibly distract. You can see how it's going right through. All right, so let's put on these leaves, the Monsera leaves and the little different colors of these. And then this guy is just sort of a some foliage, maybe that has berries or something. go. And we've got our greeting circle. So this time let's have it be, um, could be a, uh, I've got birthday, I've got fantastic. I have your amazing, let's celebrate. So I have you are so amazing. Um, let's celebrate. I think let's celebrate is a fun one to do. So I might make another one that says you did it, let's celebrate. Because like I said, this is the time of year where there's a lot of need for um, congratulations and well done and we're proud of you kinds of cards. 
So we'll do you did it. Let's celebrate. Okay, so my celebrate is in a different font and a lot of Stampin' Up! stamps are, are like that, sets are like that where you'll have maybe a um, sort of a blocky letter kind of print font as well as more of a script font. And I think that's a fun design strategy where there's some variation. Get these guys on here, a little bit of glue. And it looks like actually some of the, well, see, I'm gonna be able to hide that adhesive. And again, it, it doesn't offend me. It's really just if you um, don't want, on certain designs, you wouldn't want that vellum, messy vellum adhesive holding the vellum. You wouldn't want the adhesive to show through. There we go. So we're almost finished with our second uh, Safari card. He's just saying, hooray. My brother uh, is a, an athlete, he's a cyclist, and he was in a race this past uh, weekend in Steuben County um, near where we grew up on Cuca Lake, and he came in first place. So this would be a great one for me to send to him. He's very talented. And he's the dad of my niece, Claire, who I've shared with you. Thank you, Julia, who I've shared with you about our sweet Claire. So we had a great, lots of good family time when they were here. Uh, but this would be a fun one to send because he's kind of, triumphant here with his um you did it all right here's number three coming up if you have the card base that is this uh called soft succulent or a sage colored card and this one because the gazelle is very tall that we're going to make this a portrait card because otherwise he'd kind of hang off the edge if we fit him on the, the portrait we've got our vellum same components again the fun monstera and other leaves We've got our friend who has a cupcake for making it a party. And then this fun banner that can, can go in place, can go like he's holding it, she's holding it or, or across, I guess like that's kind of nice. So what's the first step? We wanna secure that vellum. So we're gonna remove our parts and put the vellum down. Now, she's off to the side a little bit. So I know I can put some adhesive a little bit on that side where she'll be standing and it won't show. Now, actually when this dries, it will show less, but you can really see how right now, it's kind of like a little worm of glue under there. Next up is the little leaves. Dot, 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 not a lot. My friend Angela taught me that to remind the, each other that we just need a little bit of this glue. It's very strong and it can get kind of messy. So you don't need very much. There we go. And let's stamp on here another happy greeting. How about uh, happy birthday? Something that's interesting is we need happy birthdays all year round, every day of the year, right? Uh, and again, this is fun. It's got these springtime, summertime colors, but you could, easily uh, share this with anybody any time of year for their birthday. It wouldn't just have to be during this season of the year. Birthday cards and thank you cards are the ones I tend to make the most so that I have them in my stash ready to go. Sometimes, of course, you make a card very personalized for the recipient, but other times you may just have the pleasure of creating and making a bunch of things without someone specific in mind, more just experiencing the process of making the cards and what happy it, how happy it is when it, you need a birthday card and you've got one in your stash. So here's our happy birthday friend. And I'm gonna put the banner across here. So in this case, I'm gonna use a dimensional at both ends because I've already lifted up the, the animal. And so I, I don't want the banner to be stuck down tight. I want it to also be lifted. One at each end. It's nice to see folks on live with us tonight. And if you're seeing us on Facebook, we welcome you as well. Happy birthday. So we have three of these fun cards now. In your packet, I should have mentioned when we first started, you have a little strip of these gems and they're, they're kind of invisible. I'll tell you what, I learned a great tip from my friend, 
Deb Meek, it's also her birthday today. Happy birthday to my friend, Deb Meek. Um, Deb Meek taught me that when you, when you share these little embellishments, it's a really great idea to um, put them, stick them onto another piece of paper that's got color on it, right? so that they, they don't get lost. So going forward, when I make the kits, if you have a little piece of goodness like this, um, it will be um, stuck on a piece of cardstock that, so it's going to make it easier to see. But I'm going to just go ahead and add, and then I'm noticing my computer is giving me a warning that my battery is low and I have to quick go and get the cord for it. And I'll be right back. I'll leave these here for you to enjoy. And I will hustle right back to us. Uh, these are fun little, they look kind of like pebbles. So you have a couple of those and you'll see I'm putting them on in a triangular pattern. We've got them just to kind of draw our eye around the card. There's no super rule about that. It's just the way I like to, um, a design tip I like to share with you. So there are three cards. I will be as quick as I can to find this cord and then we can keep on going. Looks like it's right here on the table. And we'll make sure we can keep on going so that the, the film, the uh, camera will keep going. Yeah, how's everybody doing? Are you all, looks like I can see a few people crafting. Great. All right, well, thankfully I found them very quickly. So let's take a look where we are again, uh, where we've come so far tonight before we go on to our final project. We've got our handmade hug and the fun coloring that we did with the bird's eye view and our safari cards. Remember these envelopes for the safari card, whichever one you have, has that fun paper on the inside. And some crafters like to take this envelope apart if they have other envelopes or if they decide to hand to gift this um, in person and they don't use the envelope. I'll show you what sometimes what people do is they just cut apart, cut a very thin edge off the end of the envelope. Oh, sorry, the left and right sides of the envelope. And then what you have is this decorative piece of paper, designer series paper that you can do all kinds of things with. So that's just another way to stretch your supplies. Uh, you might have a stash of white envelopes, or like I said, you might add this to a plate of cookies for the birthday girl. And so you wouldn't need that envelope. So that's another fun idea for, for that. Now we're going to finish with my favorite tonight. This is a kit called um, Exploring in Color. And it's one that I have a, a, just a few of to share with tomorrow for those who come to the um, Let's Kit Together. Uh, a couple different choices. Let me quick show you another set that we'll be featuring. Um, these cards have marvelous foil printing on them. They're really delightful. And it makes three of each of these designs. Sparkly rainbow color. Isn't it fun? It's really like the um, mylar or, um, yeah, and there's another name for that too, where they pick up all the rainbow colors in the silver shine. So, and these are just beautiful. And they also have some fun gems in them. So this is one of the kits that I have available for tomorrow. And then the one that I'm showing you tonight uh, has this really special pretty box. And we are changing it up a little bit. The, the, as they're designed, they're just normal folded in half opening up cards. But what I wanted to share with you tonight is what's called a bridge card. And the bridge card is a special stand-up card. And the, the bridge part in the front is the connector. And so it will fit in a regular size envelope, even though it's got that fun extra um, stand-up shape to it. So in your kit, you have one, one of these, they look very similar, right? So it, it, the, your kit will look something like this. Mine has the mountains here. There's one with the bison in the lake and there's one with um, the, um, that's the one I have. This one has the lake too with a canoe. So you have one of those cards and I'm gonna just set these up in the front here, the top of the screen a little bit to show you. But I, I wanna, um, Help you see the dimensions for this because this is a card design you might enjoy making again. I love sharing the paper engineering, right? And so each month I try to have a card that's a little, um, a fancy fold or a fun fold or just some paper engineering so you can learn some, some different techniques. 
This is called the bridge card fun fold. And you'll start with a piece of cardstock that's four and a half by eight inches. And then it's scored in four places, one and a quarter, two and a half, five and a half, and six and three quarter. And then the bridge connector piece is five and a half inches by one inch. Now, these cards are just spectacular. And even as the designs, I don't, let me see if I have the picture that shows what they look like. If you, if you make them the way they're suggested in the kit, they're just really beautifully bright colors. Um, well, they're sort of muted colors too, but they're, they have a, a, a vibrancy to them because of that beautiful uh, wild wheat and, and golden colors. And so the way these came, it was just a flat card scored in the middle. But I wanted to, to challenge myself to do something different. And I was inspired by other artists um, on Pinterest who have made um, projects using this kit. And so your card, I prepped special for you tonight. So it's that four and a half by eight inches. I just trimmed down the standard card size. Here's a standard card size like we made tonight. So you'll see it's just a little bit smaller now. I trimmed off some of the pieces so they'd be ready for you to work with tonight. Now there's a middle score line here that we don't need. It's not quite in the center and we don't wanna fold that line. If you did already, or if you do, it's not a problem. You'll see this one, it's folded a little bit here, even though I don't need that to be a fold. I want that to stay straight. I'm only gonna fold the, the shorter sides, the, um, the first and second score line from the left and the first and second from the right. And what we're doing is making kind of an accordion design here. See how it's gonna pop out this way. And then the same, I'm gonna fold in on that second line and fold back on the first line. So now I have this movement. And so I found that the, that score line that's already made from the kit, it, it doesn't distract me very much. It's a little bit of a, a bump there, but you don't need to fold on it. And, and if it does get folded, it's okay. It will still um, do its, its uh, bridge motion. Okay, so what I thought was interesting though, is um, this kit has printed envelopes with these lovely um, scenes at the bottom. So it's either, it coordinates with your card. So if you have the card that has the bison, then your little envelope has the bison at the bottom like this. Okay. And if yours has the canoe, um, let's see, that's what, there's a couple of them that are kind of similar, so I get mixed up. It looks like uh, it, it looks like the one I have as my sample tonight. I'm using this envelope. Your envelope might not match the same as mine. That's okay. What you're going to do is cut out this envelope along the shape of the printed design, and you don't have to do every little wiggly part of the grasses if you like, but you're, you're making a, a bridge piece here using that shape. Now, what could you do with this part since it's no longer an envelope? I know you'll come up with a lot of things, but you do have a solid colored strip that you could use for layering. So don't toss this. I'm sure there's ways that you can um, put that, keep that in your little shoe box of little bonus pieces from the kits. Now, this is a little bit too long. It's a little longer than five and a half inches. So I'm going to cut it down and on my, uh, I can, on my grid paper, I have a little ruler here. It's a little hard off screen here. Let me pull one out to show you. If you've come to the Let's Get Together classes, you know that we use these as our scrap paper at the table. And they also have a ruler that's really helpful. So I'm gonna trim this down to five and a half. Basically, I'm just taking off a quarter inch. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just eyeball it here, but I'm gonna take away a quarter inch of that envelope, see how close I was to just about right. I'm gonna take a hair more off. And this is just to make it a little more interesting than a flat straight piece across. We're gonna use the piece that came in the kit. And to secure that, we're gonna use our glue. I like to, because this envelope, because this is an envelope, it has two parts, two 
pieces. I'm just going to secure that with a couple dots of glue in there so that it doesn't come apart. And that's going to make this a little bit more substantial too, which will be helpful for the design. And then I'm going to put it in place and put a little glue at the end here. Now, if you have the bison card, the card with the animals on it, um, I didn't like how the envelope had a lake um, at the bottom and then the lake up at the top here. So I, I moved it up my bridge. I started about a half inch up, up from the bottom because I knew that my accessories were gonna cut, my embellishments were gonna cover up that lake. It's hard, I can kind of peel it back for you to see underneath here on the envelope, there's another blue lake. And I thought it looked awkward to have a lake and then another lake. So on the bison one, I started about a half inch up. The other cards, I lined the envelope right up into the corner. Does that make sense? So I glued one side, I'm gonna go ahead and glue the other side. And I'm just, basically you can see how the card will, will move to the right and to the left. And that's good. that makes that five and a half inches that will fit in the envelope. So that's why you have an extra envelope, just a nice um, white one. So you can mail this card to a friend because we, we cut up this original envelope, didn't we? All right, so there you see, I've got my, I wanna make sure it has a chance to dry. Remember I told you that the green glue, this multi-purpose glue gives you a little bit of wiggle room. That's a good thing, but sometimes it can move on you if you don't give it chance to bond. So I'm gonna push down here so that I'm sure that that will bond because it's a paper engineering project. It's, it wants to have motion and you wanna make sure those pieces are locked, locked down. So now's the fun part. We're going to embellish the card with the pieces that came in your kit. So uh, you have different shapes um, based on the, the card that I put in together for you. So there's one that has sort of a, a rectangly um, piece and there's one that has a banner and there's one that has a longer rectangle piece that's got some decorative trim to it. Each card Ha, each card kit has some baker's twine, or it's actually called linen thread. It's a, a beautiful, um, lightweight uh, embellishment that adds a lot of texture to your cards. And so you'll see how, let me go ahead and put together this first one, and then I can walk you through if you're, because your card might be different than the one I'm making right now. So I'm, this is like a collage again, right? So I'm going to start with that bottom piece, that mauve piece. And I don't wanna put glue everywhere here because what would happen when I close my envelope or when I close my bridge card, it would stick down and then I wouldn't be able to move it anymore. So in this case, I just have to be careful and I only want adhesive to be on the bridge itself and then I can stick this to the top. So dot, 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 not a lot. I just need a little bit here to hold that rectangle in place. Like this. And then I can take this uh, twine that I have. And in this card, I'm making kind of a nest. So I'm going to circle it around a few fingers. And it's like a, a circle now. But because when linen thread is wrapped, it, it has a bit of a memory and it likes being in that original curled up place. So what you might do first is just kind of um, help it stretch out a little bit so that it has, loses some of that memory of being coiled. Because the coil we're making is wider than the coil it was originally. So that's gonna go in place here. Now I have found sometimes it's easier to, um, to decorate your label and then put your linen thread on here directly before it'll it'll work a little better. So we're, I'll show you that. We've got this sentiment that says, it doesn't matter where you're going, it's who you have beside you. That's a nice message. So I'm inking that up with my spot. This is that cider new color called um, 
uh, oh, copper clay, it's called actually. There's another one, something called cider. So it doesn't matter where you're going, it's who you have beside you. So um, instead of putting, trying to get this linen thread to stick down here, I'm going to help let the dimensionals help me. And that will stick, will we'll stick some of the thread to these dimensionals. So I'm gonna use those to adhere. But before I turn it over, I'm gonna stick down this thread and I want parts of it to kind of stick to the dimensional there to help me make it stay. So some of it's hanging off the front and some of it's hanging off the bottom. Now, when I put it down, you'll see I have, it was a little easier to do that, except I forgot my rule about not having adhesive behind here. Remember I told you, you don't wanna do this because then it'll stick. So don't do what I do, make sure you're, dimensionals are low enough. We're gonna to have to do some surgery here. This is a good lesson. I mean, with dimensionals, you get a little bit of time, not much wiggle room, not much time because they're sticky, but I can carefully peel it off, okay? Now I have to remember, this is gonna be on top of here and I don't want it to be sticky. So I've gotta move my dimensionals down. I'm gonna just abandon those, take them right off because lots of times it's hard to, um, to move them, they just won't be sticky enough anymore. So I can move it down. And this time I can kind of sandwich my thread inside there between the paper and the dimensional. And now they're low enough that they shouldn't hang over. And when I put it in place, I'm gonna to have to really be careful that I don't hang over. So I'll keep my finger behind here. I hope that makes sense to you. Basically, we just wanna make sure that this mechanism can move. So any adhesive we put here that's exposed is gonna limit the movement. Now, if you have this card kit, you should also have this little compass. And I didn't have enough for my, my sample that we made tonight. So I'm gonna just show you the original sample. You'll use a dimensional to put your compass there in place. Now for the bison card, I shared with you the suggestion of the piece that you cut from the envelope to start about a half inch up from the bottom of the card. That way the animals show, but you're gonna hide that piece of blue lake that's underneath on that connector piece. And for your banners, you have the, the mauve piece and the white piece. And in between those, we've sandwiched this twine. It's kind of like a bow. Um, because it has loops on each end and then a, a string hanging, or you can make that same nest like I made in the first card. I'll leave that one there for you to see. And then the third one, the twine wraps around that mauve um, geometric shape. And there, the twine is quite long, so you, have, you can wrap it a few times and then tie a bow in the front or make a knot, however you, you wanna use it. If you'd like, you could make the same kind of nest again. You can use it however you like. This is a nice greeting. It says, excuse me, life is meant for good friends and great adventures. So I hope you'll like this bridge fold, you know, giving that a try. I'm gonna add um, a little bit of artwork to the envelope because this envelope had all kinds of nice artwork, but we aren't using it for the card envelope, we used it for creating the card. So one of the images that's really fun in this set is a mug like you'd have when you're camping. It's one of those um, like enamel wear, I think is what they're called, um, mugs that you might have around a campfire. So I'm going to ink this up. My other stamps are sticking tonight. I'm gonna ink it up and add that to the envelope. Okay. I have this fun compass, I can do that as well. And compass. And then on the flap, I might add one other fun one that's a little hiking boot. Are those compass and coffee cup on the uh, stamp kit you're selling tomorrow? Yes, it's a fabulous kit. It's This is the one called Exploring in Color. And it has the 
the, these three stamps that I'm showing, the, the boot, the compass, and the cup. And then it has some really fun greetings. I'll, re I'll share those with you again. There's, they say, happy birthday. It's always good to have a happy birthday, isn't it? Uh, life is meant for good friends and great adventures. It's on this one. It doesn't matter where you're going. It's who you have beside you. And then it also has cheers to another adventure. So what a nice card for a retirement or a birthday or anniversary uh, to celebrate um, a new adventure ahead. Does anyone have any questions while we're here together? I'd love to answer any questions or um, hear about your book, your current favorite author or current favorite book. <laughs> It's been fun being with you tonight. I always look forward to our Thursday evening uh, each month when we can be on together or if you're catching it as a replay, then we thank you for taking part. You can Do you have any ahead. of the add-ons for that um, latest paper pumpkin kit? For this exploring one? Yeah. I don't, they are available though, so we could order them. I don't, what, what Mary's talking about is it's called an add-on kit. Um, and it has um, their envelopes and card bases that coordinate. And so it's, it's just kind of an extension to the project. I believe those are still available. I know that the, the, um, the refill kits are available for this one. Okay. Yeah. Because they're just popular. so pretty. They are lovely. They're just really beautifully, you know, watercolored or painted scenes. And uh, it gives a great um, base for whatever kind of greeting you want to create. So Lisa loves Tolkien. Oh, yes, me too. And that's another one that's fun to revisit, right? Um, Hobbit and, and other favorites written by Tolkien. Great. So I, again, I thank you for taking part and uh, invite you if you have questions when this is um, the, on the Facebook or on the YouTube, you can put your questions and comments there and Julia and I can catch those. Uh, if you're catching it on replay, and you have something you'd like to share. You can also um, connect with me through Julia at the Baldwin Hill Public Library uh, or at my Facebook group called Missy's Glad Heart Studio. So thanks again, Julia, for partnering. I always look forward to sharing time with you and appreciate your help with all the technology. And thank and, you. And thanks for being a part of our evening. We'll see you again next month. Missy, thank you. I have a real quick question. Will you have some of the kits that uh, you showed us before with the sparkly paper? Yes, yep. That's one that's featured tomorrow. So okay. this this one, um, the one with the um, let's see, yeah, you can still see my hands. So this one is is available tomorrow. I have a few of those. And then I have a few of these really, really beautiful sparkly okay. ones. So, so I have, I think I have three or four of those. So I can. Okay. I can one and for you. Ten o'clock. <laughs> ten o'clock. That one has really great sentiments in it too. It does. does. It? They're they're lovely. Yeah, and and you'll be in the all computer the lab tomorrow. To celebrate today. It also has a beautiful with deepest sympathy. Uh, so oh, it's yeah. a stamp set that you'll find you'll use well beyond the time of mm -hmm. creating cards. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Very good. I look forward to seeing you in the morning. And All right. Thank you. Julia. Take okay. care, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.